has figured out that I would come back. Um, you know, I try not to end a broadcast and start a new one if I can. Um, but for some reason, things locked up. And I'm trying to see if we really did come back. Um, oh, boy. Something's going on out there today. Wow. Wow. Oh, it's not doing it. Wow, what is this? Live 43. Okay. Okay, there I am. What that was weird. It just like killed the broadcast. Uh, you know. Um, I, I rebuke you. Um, whatever you are out there trying to get in our way this morning. Um, I had to send my guest another link to come back, so he'll be back here in a second. Live TV. That's all I can say, y'all. It's live, live, live. Oh, yeah. Well, I'll take this time to say that, yes, we are streaming live, as we've just proven, across Facebook, YouTube, uh, uh, Roku, yeah, Roku, Android. I always say it wrong, Roku, Roku. Uh, Android, Amazon Fire, Apple TV, and, of course, E360 TV out in Phoenix, Arizona. And I also want to acknowledge and say good morning and thank you, thank you, thank you for the uh, support my sponsors, uh, Symposium.us, where you can turn your conversation into currency. Get over and download the app. Um, uh -huh, Shelly. Shelly says, the reason we're getting cut off, it's because the bees are so important. Yes, they are. Thank you all for coming back. I appreciate you. And Thad is probably, I don't, hopefully he'll know that I sent him a new link. Let me just tell him. Um, Thad Smith. Wait, where is the, uh-oh. Wait a minute, you guys. So that's weird. Oh, Lord. Okay, wait a minute. It did not send him the link. So I'm going to have to do it again, you guys. Bear with me. Um, sad. Because I'm looking at it, and I, I see he doesn't have it. Okay, there you go. Oops, that's me. And send. Bear with me. You guys get to see all the backdoor stuff. That's kind of good. Not. Okay. He sh okay, he has it now. Uh, oh, he's back. Boy, that was quick. Hi, Thad. Thanks for being so uh, awesome. I oh, said no, you it was like the link you sent. I had to redo it. And yeah, so that was my problem. New one and it didn't go. It was a, uh, Shelly Dale says the reason uh, we were interrupted is because the bees are so important. And I <laughs> you. so everybody has come back, it looks like, or they will be back, or there's always the replay. So. Oh, yeah. What we were going to do, I was we went to break, and I was going to test you. Okay. Um, and uh, put some. I'm going to put something up on the screen, and you tell me what we're looking at. Okay. All right. So that looks like a drone, and I'll tell you why. Because a drone's eyes are really large, and the the reason why they're large is because their only job is to look for a unfertilized queen. That's their only job in life. Oh, so they're wingmen. Yeah, yeah. Well, so what happens? Well, so a drone, uh, a drone is born and it's about sexually mature after about two weeks, and r around the middle of the day, around two thirty, three o'clock, all the drones go to a specific area. It's called a drone congregation area. I like to refer to it as the club. Okay. Yeah. So while they're hanging out at the club, they're just waiting for the unfertilized females to do a little drive-by where they can mate with them. Now, the only part about going to this club is you don't come home because once a drone mates with a female, unfertilized female, he dies. He dies. So yes. your final answer is that this is a drone? I am going to have to say, let me, I'm going to say yes. You're right. Yes. It is yes. a drone. Congratulations. <laughs> Very good. Okay. Um, here's our next one. What are we looking right, so at? So this is a worker bee. Uh, this is, you You will have, these are the majority of the bees in the hive, the worker bee. They do all the work. Uh, they take care of the hive. They do the security, the nurse bees. They do it all. Uh, so yes, uh, a, a typical hive will have about, an optimal hive will have about 50,000 bees in it. 
Uh, so yeah, worker bee. Correct. And now, um, what are we looking at? So the one in the middle is going to be the queen bee. Excuse she me, that's incorrect. Queen. This is the queen bee. <laughs> Thank you very much. One. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> okay, you're right. That is the queen bee in the middle. Um, it's easy. Now, when you see it like that, it's easy to tell. What is that big black thing on her? I don't know. Is that her back up near the head? Well, that's Yeah, that's just uh, that's that's on her thorax. That's just a way that we can spot her easily. Uh, if you notice, uh, her abdomen is yeah. very long, and that's where she literally keeps all of her eggs. And a queen can lay... Uh, 1,500 to 2,000 eggs a day. Some queens can lay more, some lay less. But she she lays workers and drones, so she can lay an unfertilized egg or she can lay a fertilized egg. Oh, that's Either a one. bad bitch. Yes, she is. Yes, I'm just she saying. She is. Okay, so how many... Now, there's only one queen in the entire hive. Oh, well, you can't have... All right, let's look at it like this. You can't have two queens in a castle, can you? No, you can't. No, so how how... I mean, does a queen be, are there ever queens that don't have their own place? So now, now nature is, of course, is a wonderful thing. There have been instances where the queen, there'll be two queens, and that'll be the mother queen and the daughter queen. There's been those instances. Oh, uh, the princess. So, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, look, you, uh, nature is what nature is. Nature is going to do what nature is. So what happens if two queens are in the same place? They're, they're going to have a big cat fight and tell one of them so, is dead? So what, what normally happens is uh, when when the hive makes a queen, they'll make several queens. And really, the one who the one who is born first is the queen. And what she'll do is she'll go to the other cells and sting those other queens to death. So that's how, well, uh, yeah. So they don't the movie. Of, um, yeah, they don't even right. get out of the, the cocoon. Okay, you know they had an ant story. They need to have a, a bee story. Well, they had the, the you know what they had the uh, the B movie the Jerry no, Seinfeld didn't. movie, but I, I want to make the Urban B movie is what we really need to make. And and so we talked about the Honey Bee. The Urban B movie would be about the native bees. That's the movie that we need to make. Okay, we have a question from a viewer for you. Yeah. Shelly Dale says uh, she'd like to know how the different bees are determined. Are they just born to do their job? Yes. So worker. All right. So in a hive. In a hive, uh, let me see something. Yeah, oh, okay. So this right here is a, is a frame. Let's say this is a frame. And so there's going to be foundation on this frame. Um, so, uh, so let's call this a brood frame. So the queen would lay eggs in this area right here. And down at the bottom, though, the workers would make uh, for the drones. So normally the, the worker bees will be here and the drones will be down at the bottom because the drones are bigger. So when you see the worker bees, when you see that cap, it, it looks different than a drone. So the drones look like a bullet. That's what a cap drone looks like. And the worker bee looks almost like capped honey. I wish I had a picture of some capped honey that I would better able to show you. Hey, is it true or is it an urban myth that if you, um, if you, you know, some bees are flying around you, just don't act like you don't see them because oh, they'll leave like you. Pretend like you're not there. Pretend like yeah. they're not there. So that's true. That is it's, true. it's when you get all ag aggressive that they're going to sting the shit out of you. So I tell people like this. Let's say you are just flying around, mind your own. You're walking down the street, mind your own business. And then somebody just smacks the crap out of you. You're going to be mad, right? So that's why the bees are just flying around. They're really looking for food. That's all they're looking for. And maybe a, maybe you have a color that they're attracted to. Maybe you have a smell that they're attracted to because they're attracted to floral scents. They like yellow. They like white. They love purple. So, you know, uh, Ooh, they're they like fashionable. lavender. So there's a lot of reasons why they may come around you. Now, the Well, I know thing one thing. When I've had them where they won't leave you, when they get on you about some, when they see something they like or smell something that I, they ain't leaving it alone easily. Well, that's true. And so what you can do is walk away. But when you swat at it, that's an aggressive behavior. So they're going to become, they're not aggressive, they're defensive. A bee will only sting you to save its life. That's the only reason why a bee will sting okay, you. Okay, now that's nice to know. Next urban myth I want dispelled or proven. 
Is it true that once a bee stings something, it then has to die because the stinger is in it? Is it, it is thing? true. That is a true myth. It, the stinger is attached to its ab. So when you look at the bee and the drone, so the drone and the worker, the drone's woohoo is attached to its stuff. It's supposed to be the stinger. Put it that way. It's the same thing as a stinger on a worker, the drone's penis. So oh. that's why they die when they mate with the queen because Ooh. their stomach gets torn off. When a worker uh, when a worker stings you, it's attached to its stomach. But what happens is, is there's a there's a um, a sack on the end of that stinger, oh. and that sack, uh, we know that. Well, well, that sack uh, is a poison <laughs> sack, but it also emits a an, a pheromone that attracts the other bees to come sting you there as well. Oh, so it's a bull. So they base literally has put a target on you. Yeah. So it's like if you see, uh, like, it's funny if you see a bee and after it stung you, it'll just like walk back and forth. And I'm thinking, oh yeah. Uh, I always say, yeah, my boys are gonna come and get you. I'm not dying for a reason. I always make up little stories, you know. And they. It, it, so so how many times have you been stung? So I started in 2013. I got stung. Over a hundred times in 2013, and I quit counting after that. So it's, you got stung over a hundred times. Yeah, in one year, in one season. Yeah. And how long? Okay, here's another uh, uh, myth. If you get stung by a bee, should you put? My grandmother used to put baking soda. A now I don't know about I, I, that. Can't because what that does is sucks up the poison. You could put that on there. Yeah, and the, it would bring the stinger out. Too. Yeah, you don't pull the stinger out. What you want to do is get something, a flat credit card, and you want to scrape it because on the end of that stinger, like I said, is that poison sack. If you squeeze it, that squeezes in that poison, and it just makes the sting worse. <laughs> so you Wait want to a minute. scrape it. When they sting you, it's not just a stinger. There's a poison sack, too? There's a poison sack, too. And then what? if you look at it real close, it's almost it's like a pump that's pumping in the poison back and forth it just keeps moving it doesn't stay still that's why it's so irritating and that pumping action pumps in that poison so it just irritates you and irritates you and that's where that swelling comes from so yeah it's it, um, it bees are so interesting lauren they're just fascinating so when kids come to work with you because some people are allergic to bees right so I when tell kids them, if you're allergic to bees don't how do they the know though if they know how does a person know they're allergic to bees until they get stung yeah, that's the thing. Until you get stung, I didn't. You know, what's funny is I didn't know if I was allergic, and I just went full tilt boogie. So the first time I got stung, I really could have died. I I just had no clue. Uh, I, I always ask people before they come, "Are you allergic to bees? Do you know? Maybe you might want to find out." Or if you're, do you keep epipens handy? Yeah, oh, you got to have epipen. Got to have one. Just because. Okay. Just so, because you never know. You never know. So how much does it cost for a person? Uh, I think. Shelly Dale, somebody on here has bees and oh, they were, cool. yeah, they were commenting uh, Friday. So if a person wanted to start just as a hobby and have one of those little boxes in their backyard or whatever, um, what is it expensive to get started doing this? Yeah. Beekeeping is kind of an expensive hobby. It, it how, how much does that suit you were wearing? Oh, uh, they average anywhere from $199, 250 bucks. Wow. One of my um one of my followers in the I know Florida. I think it was Mandy Mandy kicked his daughter. Is that who I was thinking of? Somebody that worked in a grocery store told me that when COVID first started, um there was a lady who came in shopping inside of her bee beekeeper's outfit. Yeah. <laughs> she wasn't playing with it. She wasn't uh, catching I, shit. She I she went was, outside like that one time. I thought it was funny. I I, I want to have a good time. So yeah. yeah. I'm trained and everything. So do you have little mini uh, like children sized bee suits. Yes. Yeah. You they 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 go from small to tall. You can get a bee suit for any age whatsoever. So you guys use the funds that people donate uh, uh, to help uh, keep this program afloat. So you need what are some of the things that you need now that we might be able to help you with? So currently, so the location that I'm at right now is called Sweetwater Foundation. Talk about it wonderful organization the brother emmanuel who, who founded the place he's a macarthur genius grant winner this brother wow. is deep i love that brother. i mean he 
it's like when you have conversations with you, it's not a conversation, bro. It's teaching moments. Every time you talk to him, this Negro is teaching you something. It just okay. Uh, I need know, to hook up with him. Yeah. Oh, you. I'm telling you, Lauren, I, I, I'll, I'll put a word in. Bro. Do that. He's, he's a dope, dope brother. Dope. Do that. Um, and so they, it's called a Think Grow House. And what they do is it's a farm. So they teach people about agriculture. Uh, they, they sell what's called fractals. And so they teach people woodworking. So oh, nice. oh man, it's it's a dope spot, bro. It's dope. And I'm so happy that they allow they allow me to be on their property, man. It's really so that's I, where you were that's where the hives were. Yeah, that's where the hives were. Yeah. Nice. And, okay. And, uh I got I was introduced to them through a, a young lady named Janelle. She's out of North Carolina. Uh I, I just happened to move up. I wanted to have some bees there, so mm. I, I moved the bees there. And last year and this year, this is what happened when I moved the bees there. So it's so, it's been Wonderful, man. Wonderful. What is it you love most? What have you seen this experience doing for those kids? It opens up their mind to what is really out there. It mm -hmm. it takes away fear. Because if you look at a child, everything is new to a child. A two-year-old, everything is new. This every, the, every sunrise is a brand new day to them. It's mm -hmm. something new to them. You know, as adults, we become so jaded and, you know, it's just another day. I got to go to work, blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. When you when you capture a child's wonderment and wanting to learn, you have their attention. And then what you do is we teach them math, we teach them biology, we teach them science surreptitiously. Mm -hmm. you, you know what I mean? Yeah, uh, sneak it yeah, in. Yeah, yeah, they don't they don't know they're learning all this crap, but they're learning this crap. Um, I, I call everything crap. My fault. Yeah, and but that's it, uh, it, that's a great way to do it. Great way to yeah, teach yeah, and yeah. a great way to learn. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> What, and the great thing about children is they they put things in perspective that adults just don't. They make things so simple because children don't have all these other things. It's it's very simple. And, and one this one young lady put it so simply. A beehive is a queen and 50,000 bees. That's the body working all together. That was so. Wow. It blew my mind. We yeah. Kids, are, kids, kids are. So do you ever get pushback from the parents because they think it might be a little bit too dangerous for their kid? Yeah, any, any child that comes to me, their parents are full tilt boogie involved. Ready to so, go. Okay. Uh, I, I, I try. And if a child, if a parent is hesitant, I start them. I start talking about native bees, start talking about stingless bees, you know, get them, get them involved in nature. Cause did you say stingless kids, bees? Yeah, stingless bees. Well, there's we. I call them stingless because literally they will only sting you just save themselves, and it's not it's, it's not like a bee sting. It's like a like a pinprick. Yeah, so, to someone who's been bitten, uh, stung a hundred times, but to us virgins, well, no, because the wasp it, tore my ass up. Those wasps. Yeah, it's tore not me as up. bad as a wasp sting. The bee stings, they sting, bro. They freaking sting. I hate them. I hate them with a passion. Uh, but they just sting. And uh -huh. but the native bees are. We call them stingless because that's not. They they're can't. not. They're not out just to be mean. They're there just to save themselves if they have to. Well, because they're solitary bees. Native bees are solitary. They work by themselves. Honey bees, they can they can sacrifice themselves because there's another fifteen hundred bees being born the next day. Uh -huh. That's the difference. Okay. Next question. The how tedious is the job? Okay. When we see what we saw some uh, Friday comb we saw the comb and the uh -huh. honey was inside of the individual cells how do you get it out of that and get it so clean inside that jar without all kinds of pieces of honey honeycomb so really all we do is so if you take a look at this thing, i'll show you this if you take a look at this this is going to be the honey it's going to be capped and that's capped with wax and so i call it like it's like tupperware you, like you put a cap on a sure. tupperware and when you're ready you open it up and so what i do is we can use a hot knife and we scrape that cap that wax capping off. Okay. Then we can use that wax capping for the candles. Uh, and then what we do is we put it in an extractor. An extractor is just a machine that spins it around, uses centrifugal force to force all the honey out. That'll come down to the bottom. We open up the gate at the bottom, and then we use a strainer. And the only reason why I use a strainer is to get out of the wax, maybe their head, you know, whatever unpleasant trees might be there that might be not be visually not might make it so visually and put in a put in a bucket and then that's a gated bucket that i can use to just put it in here it's that simple now it sounds simple but that task in order to get it in here it is there's a lot of work that goes i was gonna say 
a lot of work. Uh, and, and it makes sense when you look at the retail. Like, um, are those quart jars or pints? These are quarts. I, so, I use these as displays. Okay. So, so I don't know if you can tell, but this is a, a, a very light yellow. This is kind of oh, yeah. a brown. Oh, yeah. This is a little darker. Darker. I, I show that because honey, you can have a different color honey. I can fill this table with different color honey. I heard Every you day say day. the other day you can have pink honey. You can have whatever you what the honey is going to be dictated by the floral source and that what floral using, source, yes. whatever whatever that color of that floral source is. So you could be dark, it could be light, it could have a fruity taste, it could have a nut taste. I mean, it, there's that's so, so incredible. Different. It's so much information. I could sit here and talk about this, believe it or not, all day. Now, but we don't have all day. I, before we get out of here, I want you to talk about this new idea. We have about four minutes. Okay, Let's yeah. talk about this new idea that you have. I love it, and I want to know more about it. And when you get it in the, uh, when you get it to fruition, I'd love to have you back, see how oh, it turned out. And I'm speaking of the boys, the bees, and the badge, the connection, yeah, so how to get your kids to have that conversation with law enforcement. I think it's very important. So I... I one day I was, I had my B equipment and long story short, this cop came up to me and we had a conversation and I had to realize, you know, I told him, I said, bro, I got a problem with that badge, bro. I just got a problem with it. And so I was, I, I didn't say I, I was mad at him. I just had a problem with the institution of policing. Okay. And so, and so he had a conversation. I said, you know what, what I need to do is I need to, I, unless I had these conversations, man, I'm never not going to be mad at you. I'm never not going to get over my feeling. Right. So at that moment I said, I said, I want to create something that can, can start these conversations on, on a level on which it's just not sitting at a table. It's sure we're at the beehives. And so it's, I'm going to call it the boys, the bees and the badge. And it's, it's kids who may be in trouble or it's cats who got issues in their background. and don't like the fuzz and it's cops who the see fuzz. people with issues in their background. That, <laughs> okay. Huggy you know, bear, the fuzz. <laughs> oh my God. Was that police woman, Angie Dickinson? I saw run past. Oh no, that was Christy Love. Get hey, her. I'm old Get school, Christy baby. Love. I'm old school. <laughs> you said fuzz. I, had, I, I know, couldn't pass I that up. Uh, Dang. Uh, Dang the fuzz. <laughs> okay. And so it's 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 being able to have those conversations. Sure. What, what it is is you come in and we do beekeeping. We don't have conversations. We talk about beekeeping and beekeeping only. And now we get to learn together. And as you learn with another individual, you get to see how they learn, what they're learning, their wonderment, how they feel. You get to be a part of that. And I now you it. see them as a person and not a police officer or an ex-convict, and I hate that word. So now we can then see each other as people and now have better conversations in regard to whatever our issues are. I love it. You guys, check out the West Side B-Boys. It's on your screen right now. Or you can check them out over here at West Side B-Boys. That's B-O-Y-Z like zebra dot WordPress. Dot com. Get in there and, and learn more. Maybe you have something that you could donate to this program that is absolutely worthy, obviously. And uh, just a great way. One of the most unique ways I've seen that we can introduce and enlighten and introduce education and enlighten and empower our young inner city youth. Love it. Love it. Love it. Dad, I want to thank you for all you do to make it better for our kids and uh, for the world, because without bees, we would be in big, big trouble. So yes, I thank you. You know, this is your second time back. We got uh we won't wait so long uh before we get you back next time, okay? Well, you know what? You you had, that first time I was on, you invited me, you said, Hey, yeah, if you do the B stuff, I said, Hey, I'm ready this year. So that's why I reached out to you. So thank you for, oh, thank you for having me back, bro. You're welcome. It. Thank you so much. God bless. Stay safe and have a great week. You too. Hey, All right, uh, man. happy belated Juneteenth, my brother. Thank you. Thank you. Right. Same to you. Same to you. Yep. Thank you. Dad J. Smith, everybody, of the West Side B-Boys, a nonprofit servicing inner city kids and showing them how to become uh, proficient at the art of beekeeping. And uh, also little entrepreneurs because they get to make the, the wax, the candles, uh, the products. They got skin products. They got the honey, of course. Uh, so get over and check them out, westsidebboys.com. I want to thank all of you for sharing your morning with me, starting your week with me. Please come back tomorrow. <clears throat> this is a week of diversity. Nico's with us tomorrow. And you're going to hear some great things about uh, how to get your life on track uh, if it isn't already. Uh, join me here. I'll meet you on the front porch at 8 a.m. Central, God willing. And we'll do it all again. Have a great day. And remember, if you want to be the blessing, find the nearest mirror because you'll need to see it. If you can't see the blessing, how do you expect to ever be one? God bless you. I'll see you then. <laughs>